So this next job is a job I never thought I'd be doing as an RV technician, but I have an electric uh, golf cart here. Well, it's not a golf cart. It's one of those uh, Austin Powers airport carts that I had a customer drop off because they're sick of their batteries always going dead. Now the solar panels on top might give away what we're doing. My customer uses it in a yard very similar to mine to move trailers around of all things. So they don't use this back utility area for anything. They just use the hitch to move trailers around. I'm not sure what type of trailers. I didn't ask. That wasn't my uh, business. You can see they got a backup ball right there. So what he's asked me to do is install some solar panels on the back to keep those batteries fully charged because he doesn't always get to uh, plug it in. And then, of course, the batteries always go dead because they are um, six six volt golf cart batteries, three on each side. And if you don't keep these things charged up, they do go bad pretty quickly. They sulfate and then you have uh, a big expense every single time. So he wants to keep solar on the back of it to keep those charged up when he has it just sitting in his yard like mine. Now he hasn't given me too much direction, just he wants solar panels installed. He doesn't care about this utility deck back here. I happen to have a couple of these Renogy 100 watt panels and I was just mocking something up to, to spitball some ideas. You guys know anything about me? I like building stuff out of trash and garbage. And so I went to my trash and garbage pile right here and I got to thinking, you know what? I could probably use those as rails and mount those solar panels on these right here engineer some sort of a sleeve and then this whole thing could hinge up because I do want the whole thing to be able to hinge up not because I want to adjust the sunlight to the panels at all it's just underneath this deck right here it's going to be how you get access to all the uh, components that you're going to need to get access to if you need to service the cart now these are uh, the panels that I had laying around the spare panels for another project I'm going to be doing they're a little bit long so I wouldn't want these to be on the back and obviously I don't want to get install used panels for something somebody's paying me for. So I went ahead and used this as a mock-up and obviously I'm not going to use trash because this isn't my project. But the mock-up using trash did give me an idea because I have been following another creator builder on uh, this platform that does a lot of van conversion. And they've been using aluminum extrusion to do all their interior cabinetry. And it got me thinking, that might be perfect for mounting solar panels. Now, this is the extrusion I'm talking about right here. It's more commonly used in like 3D printing and home uh, brewing setups uh, and for making uh, workbenches and other pieces of machinery because it all interlocks together kind of like an erector set. So you can get all sorts of different connectors that bond the whole thing together. You don't have to weld any of this. And because of its cutaway design or uh, profile right there, this stuff is incredibly strong and it's aluminum, so it's good for exterior grade. So I got to thinking maybe this can solve all the problems I want to make a solar rack that'll be easy to lift and close and keep the uh, solar panels off the deck and protect everything. Now it's not priced too uh, excessively. And like I said, they think these are calling it 2020. I'm sure it's metric measurements. And this is about three quarter, but it should be about three quarter. Now initially when I was spitballing, I thought about getting those RV roof mounted uh, panels that were adjustable. So there would be a cross member of angle aluminum across the entire backside right there. Then I thought about engineering some sort of like uh, T molding that I could just drill a hole in and make a hinge out of that but with this uh, 2020 which is what I got aluminum 2020 which is pretty small it's not the bigger stuff that you're used to uh, I did uh, do some research and I found these hinges that will interlock with this so I can pretty much just mount these on the side four on each side and these will allow the whole thing to pivot back and forth making a whole picture frame grid to support each one of the panels. I'm gonna go with three panels. And then it has a quick release pin, so you don't even need tools if you want to uh, undo it and then lift the whole thing up. I ordered some panels that I think are gonna fit. Which are uh, JJN panels, but appropriately, they're still 100 watt panels. But they're not quite as wide, and they won't extend out past the uh, cart itself. So it should be a little bit safer, less prone to getting damaged. 
and I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what I would almost call like a, a spacecraft Mars rover when I'm all done. What I'm going to do next is just uh, lay this out, make a drawing, and hopefully first time build it the way I want it to be built, and then I'll put it together and I'll show you how it works. But if there's one thing you guys should know about me that I try to tell you in all the videos where I'm making measurements, I just do not have the patience or tolerance for extreme measurements and so having to make sure that I make allowances for half this on each side so that the panels can sit that way and that way on top of it. I'm not sure this is going to go exactly as well as I think it's going to, but we'll find out. Now, there's a lot of people out there that are a lot more engineered savvy than I am. I've tried to do AutoCAD drawings and measure everything up. It just does not scratch my brain. I need to work through uh, builds by seeing it and how they lay out. Now this racking comes with all sorts of different brackets that you can mount things to and with. So I ordered a whole bunch of different things because I'm not sure what will or won't work. But I got these brackets right there that I think will mount the panels pretty easily on the ends on both sides. And then in between, I'm just going to have to come up with, I think, a bracket like this that will clamp down the middle on both sides just as additional uh, support because it will be bolted to the side rails anyways. But this is basically what I'm looking for. These are obviously too long. And then underneath right here, I'm going to have four hinges on each side. That'll be mounted underneath there. That should give enough clearance to raise this whole thing off the bottom or the deck and then allow these to pivot pretty well. And then it just slides in and tighten it up. I can even do this all one-handed. And then with this toolless pin right there, that should allow this to pivot around. And then this would be how it would bend up, just like that. I'll have to modify this handle, obviously, so you can unscrew it. I would prefer a knob, but it didn't come with a knob. And of course, I'm just mocking this up. The mounting point for the entire array. Be one over here, and of course, this one over here. So, if you pull that pin all the way across, all four of them, the whole thing should be able to hinge up over to that side. That's how the idea works in my head. I think it's a good idea to have the cross bracing in between rather than have the panels do all the uh, uh, twist support, uh, keep it from torquing because I don't want to shatter the glass right here. And of course it is glass and it is tempered glass. So the owner will have to uh, make sure that they don't use this as a utility trailer and load things on top of the panels, but I'm telling everybody not to do that. So it's their fault if they do that. So I think I do have it mocked up pretty much the way I want it to be. I just have to get the length, which will be from here all the way to here, because there is nice steel framing all the way around that I can mount those hinges to. And it doesn't matter if um, these are longer than the frames underneath. I think that'll work out pretty well, with only four clamps in the middle. That's where it's just gonna have to work out. But I think this is gonna work. So let me get all the drawings put together, then I just have to cut everything to fit. And there's my measurements. It wasn't completely uh, square, so wider at the front and narrower at the back. So I'm just going to uh, take this over to my workbench over here. I just have a simple um, miter box. I can cut through aluminum pretty easily with this. I'll get everything cut out and hopefully I'll use this to build it all up. Then I'm going to have four 19 and 13 sixteenths and two 20 and 5 sixteenths. This one is 44. So I got all my pieces cut. This is a scrap I don't need. Don't need that. Here's all my pieces. I did label them. Now I'm just going ahead and build it. Now I'm going to be using these reinforced 90s that actually came with the kit. It's just because uh, I think these will work better than these as far as strength go and I don't have to worry about clearances I like having the gussets 
uh, on the corners. So they'll just be going to the notches uh, that are on the rails themselves. I don't know if you can see the notches there. They fit in there. Again, with the captured nuts that we're going to have. Should just uh, kind of a bigger rector set. I mean, this part seems a little bit tedious to me. I think it'll help speed up the process. And it makes uh, probably doing this a lot easier. Because I have some other plans coming down the pipeline with some other projects. I'm going to need to see if this stuff works too. My original thought was to use the, the bigger stuff, the 80-20 or the 40-40. But at the time I wasn't sure if 20-20 was a universal thing or not. But apparently it is. Yes, this did take a lot more time than I thought it was going to take to assemble all this. I was able to lay the panels on top and put it all together make sure everything lined up. All right, so I have it all mocked up here now. I have the hinges installed and I did center them on the frame here. There's still framing all the way around. So I think that's going to work pretty well. All I think I have to do now is mark here where they're all going to go because this is diamond plate. And I'm going to need to make sure that it's not an uneven surface that I'm trying to mount these feet to. That should be a lot better to mount those hinges to. Alright, so I'm going to put the first two brackets on and then make sure everything else lines up. Because it has to be a little bit more exact than my measurements when we get them. And then when we put so many of them on, it should keep it from twisting. But I'll be damned if that didn't work. Let me just lay out the other ones, drill them, screw them, and then we'll be getting really close to having these mounted. Didn't think it'd take this long. Overall, the progress is a little bit slower than I thought it was going to be with the, uh, a set that would go together with the simple tools, but I am trying to build this all at the same time using uh, my engineering skills. And if I had milled like 10 of these, it'd be a lot easier. I don't know if um, tube aluminum would have been easy at this point, but this is an idea that I had and I thought it might be kind of useful for other projects that I might be having coming up. And I just used the scratch all right there to actually mark where I'm going to be putting the brackets. All right, so hopefully with all those in, now I just have to uh, hinge this whole thing up and you kind of have an idea of what we're doing here. Oh, it'll even stay. Perfect. Awesome. Now I just have to put the brackets on this side to put the panels on. Pretty flush right there, flush right here. Overlapping where I wanted to overlap right there. This is kind of the only way I thought of it. Thought ahead and I put these nuts already in the rail right there. Spread that in. Get that started. And then just make sure it's in the center right there. I'll put a couple tap screws into the frame right there. I'll do that on this side or the other side, two on each front and back ones, and then we'll clamp down the middle. So I think this is actually going to work really well. But on this back rail and the front rail, because this end is open, I, don't, I didn't have to preload these. So I can just slide them in the end. Two for that bracket, and then two more for the other bracket. So that'll be pretty easy. So this part's nice. So with those, uh, one, two, three, that's about the middle of that one, the middle of that one. All right, then I'm just gonna be using my favorite one inch long self-tapping washer headed screws. Did I already do a pre-drill through there to make sure I'm not gonna be going into the glass. And we'll just do that all the way around. All right, so all the brackets are screwed down all the way around. I just have to put the four clamps 
I'll have to go get the right size screws for that and a couple washers. So I just got uh, back from the store. I picked up the last little items or hardware that I wanted to do to finish up the actual solar panel installation, and I'll walk you through it. I developed my own uh, solar panel clamps. So these are M5 screws. I went with stainless steel Phillips heads. I'm gonna go with this uh, washer that has a rubber washer on it also. And then I have some 316 stainless steel fender washers. Point out the most important thing is, is that they need to be 40 millimeters long. Can't be longer than that or else the screw's too long and it jams up. So you put the rubber washer on, the stainless steel fender washer, and then the captured nut. And with that all put together, we just slide it through the aluminum extrusion right there. So you gotta just barely tighten it up. And I have it set up to go right about there. Just have my Phillips screwdriver, and let's just tighten it up. And that'll clamp down on both of the surfaces. I'm not sure how necessary it really is. Uh, just with those two brackets on either side, it's more than enough. But I think having some downward pressure in the middle will also firm up the entire system too. But I do feel like this is tightening up pretty well, compressed, putting some downward pressure on everything. This is mostly a proof of concept to see how useful this extrusion would be for solar panel mounts. I think overall I'm pretty happy with its performance. It does have a little bit of flex to it, which I, I mean it is smaller. But when it comes to making an array, I guess it works. Obviously I still have to wire this thing up. There is some idea if you guys had it in your head that if you wanted to, or were so inclined to, you could still use one more piece of this extrusion right there using a swivel connection. I don't know, get it cut to fit where it would just tuck in right there as a kickstand. And then you could probably have an adjustment with a thumb screw to whatever uh, angle you wanted to put it at. That's not my idea behind this whole thing. And I'm a little terrified about this thing falling off and putting back pressure on the seal, on the uh, solar cell right there. So I don't really want to do that. But yeah, there's lots of different options we could do here. But I think with that, I'm going to call it a day and then I'll get with the owner and see what they want to do moving forward. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope this inspired somebody. That is to say, we're using this 2020 extrusion to build a solar array. I think it is still cheaper in the long run. Those um, adjustable racks that you can get online too. The arms are a little bit short. They're usually only good for one panel. So you have to do two sets per panel and it gets quite expensive. And then you have to adjust all those. Now, because I used the smaller stuff right here and those hinges are a little bit thin, even though there's four of them, I would still be pretty hesitant of putting a lot of weight on them without having some back support. That seems like a lot of torque and weight for those hinges to hold up to, so I wouldn't want to leave it without supporting it with my hand. But if we went with a bigger system, maybe the bigger hinges would be fine. And I think it might work on the next project that I'm going to be putting together. Now, there's a lot of people out there that are very engineered, engineer savvy. Yeah, it didn't take too long to figure out that you need to put a driver. It's going to take forever to tighten on this up, but they. X key, key. So we got a bona fide dust storm of boob right in the middle of my build. Of course. The wall of it's right about there now. Oh. Well the canopy's holding up okay. Very strange summer here in the valley. That's why I haven't wanted to do a roof job. <laughs>